Hey you guys, welcome back. Um, I guess I should probably introduce myself because I don't think you guys have ever seen my face, but I am Monica. I am the content creator here at Period 6 Designs and I also run uh, Period 6 Designs Etsy store, so um, where I sell all my creative things and knickknacks. And so the reason I'm making this video today is because um, you know, we're on stay home orders or safer at home, whatever they want to call it now. And you guys have been having a lot of questions about epoxy. And so I went through the comments and, you know, just common things I've asked. And I've actually written down a list of the top 15 questions that I get most often. Um, just to kind of give you guys some like knowledge, background, things from my perspective on epoxying. So hopefully this video is very helpful. Um, please use this video in conjunction with my uh, beginner's epoxy because I have like a technique in there that I think is really helpful as well. So please check that out. I'll leave that link below um, in the description box. But um, yeah, so I'm going to just answer a bunch of questions that I get often. And if you have any more questions outside of this, leave, the, leave them below and I will answer for you. So question number one is what type of epoxy I use. Um, so I use this Alumilite Amazing Clear Cast two-part clear coating and casting resin. Um, so this is how it looks. Just be aware that um, I pick mine up at Michael's all the time. You can also get it on Amazon. But at Michael's, before the pandemic, they had a 40% coupon that you could use. But I know right now they're doing like 20% off. Um, so it's definitely coupon eligible. Um, but be careful because there's another one that comes in a box that's like similar color. But the work life isn't as long as this one. But this is the one you want to use. And I use this one because... It complies with FDA 21 CRF, which was for coatings intended for indirect or direct repeated food contact, which makes this safe to use on cups because they're going to come in contact with your mouth. And so that little stipulation is right on the back. And like you can use this like on like tabletops and bar tops and countertops. And so this is the type of epoxy I use. This is the only epoxy I've ever used. Um, I know there's also art resin, which I believe is also FDA compliant, but there's something with it why people like it. I think it's because it's like non-irritant or it doesn't have the fumes. If I'm correct, I think it's the fumes. So if you're one of those people who the fumes may um, upset you or give you headaches, I definitely recommend this. And I will say that after probably a year of using epoxy is when the fumes started to bother me. Um, at first, I didn't really notice the fumes, but after like a year, that's when I started to like notice I'm like oh these fumes are kind of getting to me like they would kind of give me like a slight headache and so I did start wearing a mask with a little respirator in it unfortunately right now they're really hard to find so I don't have any so I've been epoxying without a mask but typically um, in normal circumstances in the world I would wear a mask with a respirator in it just because I had started to become slightly irritated by the smell of the fume so this is the type of epoxy I use so another question I get is how many cups can I do with this box? And so this is, I think these are oh my God, some open ones right here. These are eight ounces a piece, so 16 ounces total. And this, that set for me will probably do 20 ounce cups, maybe five or six, 30 ounce cups, four or five, or the water bottles. I don't know if you guys have ever seen me do a water bottle on this channel. Um, let me show you. But these are the 24 ounce water bottles you can pick up at Walmart. You can probably do five of these as well, at least, if not more, depending on how heavy handed you are and wasteful you are. I tend to be a little wasteful with my epoxy. Um, so yeah, if you're actually good at measuring out, then you're good. But speaking of measuring, you can actually just go on like Pinterest and you can look up like they have like people have made charts where it tells you like for your first layer, your second layer, and potentially if you need a third layer, how many mils, uh, milliliters you need to measure out of epoxy. So those are really helpful. I don't personally use those. I kind of try to go from my memory um, because again, I'm a little heavy handed. Um, so definitely look those up on Pinterest. Just type in like epoxy measurement chart and I'm sure one will come up and that'll help you so you're not wasteful. Another question I get is where do you buy your tumblers? Um, this is Ozark Trail. And so all my tumblers that I use, you know, whether it be water bottles, 20 ounce or 30 ounce, or even I've done 40 ounce tumblers are all Ozark Trail. And you can get them all at Walmart right off the shelf. You don't have to worry about ordering online or anything like that. 
One company that I do follow is Stainless Steel Depot and they have hog. So if you're interested in buying hog tumblers, you can get them from them. And they're about the same price as the um, Ozark Trail. But for me, I, I don't like to keep a lot of stock on hand because I don't want it like junking up my house if I'm, if people aren't going to order like, you know, right, right away and all the time. So I like the ability to just go to Walmart and grab a few you know, just kind of keep them stored for when I do get an order or I want to make something for myself or family or a friend. And so that's just personally what I like to use. The Ozark Trail ones are really good. I actually have a personalized, well, I have multiple personalized water bottles and I actually take these to work. And in the morning before I leave to go to work, I will fill them up with ice. And as the day goes on, I have like a water dispenser. It's Hello Kitty. Um, and so I will dispense water into it all day and literally and I get to work at like six, my ice and the, my water is room temperature. So by the time the ice is melted, I'm on my last few ounces of water that has kind of heated the ice up. But honestly, if you put ice in one of these Ozark Trovens and you just leave it, when you come back like the next morning, the ice will still be in there. So these things are of great quality. You don't need to buy a Yeti or anything like that. These ones work just fine for whatever type of hot or cold purposes you think you're gonna use them for. So the next thing you're going to need on your tumbler journey is a spinner. So people are always asking me, what is that you're using to turn the cup with? And I'll drop a little picture in here. Um, but it's called a cup spinner and you can buy them just anywhere on the internet. Um, I've gotten one from Etsy and I've gotten one from Amazon. I have two at the moment, just two single cup spinners. That's all I need um, for my, for my use and what I'm, I'm using them for. Don't pay more than $25 for a spinner, for like a basic spinner. And the picture I, I'll put up is a, of a, just a basic spinner and that is all you need. I've, I have my video with spinning regular tumblers, wine bottles, the big wine bottle. All that was done on the single cup spinner that was $25 or less. I think I got one for $25 and one for $20. So check out Amazon and check out Etsy. Just type in cup spinner or cup turner and you will be able to find one. Again, don't pay more than $25 unless there just are none available that are less than $25, but you really don't need to spend more than $25 on a spinner. Some people have also written in the comments that they planned on making their own. There are plenty of videos um, with people making their own spinners, like with like rotisserie grill, grills, <laughs> rotisserie grill motors and like things of that nature, but that's not something I'm personally interested in. I like to be able to get, you know, to my project without the project being a project, you know, a project within a project. So, but is that something like you're into and you want to do that type of project? You're more than welcome. There are plenty of videos. On, I, I watched the videos on YouTube and thinking in my mind, I was going to make my own turner, but I'm like, listen, these motors are like 15 bucks for 10 more bucks. I can just get a fully built spinner. So that's just how I thought about it is definitely up to you. And so... Um, a lot of people, I've seen people concerned about overheating. I've never had an issue with overheating. So like the, the most amount of time I maybe let my spinner spend is maybe 12, like well, I, 12 hours is standard, maybe 14 if I kind of just forgot about it or I overslept, if I like did a cup overnight. And like when you touch the back of your motor, it will be warm. It'll be very warm. I'm not even gonna lie, it's gonna be very warm. But there's, it's not gonna overheat, it's not gonna like burn out. A circuit or anything like that so don't worry about it overheating again with the ones I've just sourced from the internet I've never had problems with them overheating or anything like that or like overheating to the point where they stop nothing like that I've never had that issue again they will get hot don't don't be alarmed if your spinner gets hot that's normal you know when anything it's like your car if you go on a road trip and your car has been running for hours and you get out and you touch the hood of your car, it's going to be, it's going to be fairly warm because that's just how, you know, energy works. So don't be alarmed if your spinner heats, heats up or anything like that. That is standard, typical, and normal. Something else you're going to want to invest in if you want to get into the epoxying business are the little Dollar Tree footballs. And so I've gone through my fair of, share of them get the big ones the small ones the ones in the middle the ones attached to the little nerf balls you're gonna want a lot of those just for different different reasons between you want one to hold your cup when you're glittering you want one to hold your cup when you're epoxying you want one to hold your cup when it's drying between glittering epoxying all those things after epoxy between epoxy layers so you're gonna want a quite a few of those and so i keep them at the ready and i also keep extra um pvc pipes and you can just go to lowe's 
and they'll cut those of any length for you. So don't think that you have to like go out and like buy a saw or anything like that. Just when you pick out the PVC you want at Lowe's, they will or Home Depot, they will cut it for you. Just tell them how many, how long you want it. They make you take the scraps. So try to think of a, like a length that you can get like the same amount without them giving you like a 20 inch piece left over that you got to take to the register and look stupid with which are all your little 12 inch pieces left over um so just something to think about but definitely get plenty of those little dollar tree footballs you don't need to get anything more expensive than that to try to hold your cup on your turner um if you're doing like a 40 ounce because when i did the 40 ounce even the i don't think i even had the big footballs at the time they have the big ones now at the dollar tree but just take like a like a bigger dish rag or a hand towel and just wrap it around the football and then put it on your in your cup and then on your spinner and that'll hold it no need you don't need to invest a lot of money on like contraptions because i've seen like the contraptions where like it like springs open and the cup is up don't buy none of that all that you don't need none of that to get into epoxying buy the dollar tree footballs um so there's a couple of popular methods you can use when epoxying my personal method and the one you see in my epoxying video is the drop and catch method which is pretty much you're just applying what would be considered like a regular layer of epoxy on your cup so i definitely again refer to that video for my like how i like to do my layers of epoxy i also have another video which i will link below doing the hang method so the hang method is definitely an economical way i guess to get into epoxy because you use a lot less epoxy um so pretty much that method is you're using you're using very thin layers of epoxy in order to epoxy me personally that the hang method is good for a glitter layer and like a ceiling layer but you still need to do a final full layer but i have seen people do the hang method like multiple times on a cup that takes too long like i like to be able to finish a cup in two days the hang method it, you are using less each time but in the long run it's costing you more time time is money so it's just something to consider but i will link my video for the hang method below as well if you haven't seen that so another question i get often is about epoxying over the lips so essentially about epoxying over this part of a cup and so i'll just demonstrate so when you have like a water bottle like this and it has a lid that has a like a gasket type sealant ring and you put it on it creates a very tight seal. I don't know if you can see it that up close, but it has a seal that's going around like in this little space, that's a seal. And so I do not come up and over and like almost, you know, almost into the cup because your epoxy has the ability to break that seal, which could cause your cup to leak. And so I will come up and just up. I don't come up and over like this. I don't do that. I may come up and like this and stop there and pull my hand off, but you don't want to come up and over and leave epoxy all in there because you're going to break that seal. And the same goes for a tumbler with the lid. You don't want to risk breaking that seal. And so something you can do is when if you do do that, because I do know people who like to do go ahead and just epoxy over it because that way it always gives them a smooth rim without them having to do any extra effort. Um, and they'll just take an exacto knife and cut that off when they're done, which is completely acceptable as well. But yeah, do not do not epoxy over your lid because eventually that epoxy is going to want to come up from always being like washed and handled and stuff and like juice flickering up on it. And it's eventually going to loosen and then you're going to have pieces that are going to want to chip up. Take it from personal experience, y'all. You're going to have pieces that are going to want to chip up and then you'll also have a place where your seal is could still potentially be broken. So don't epoxy like up over the lip, just up to the lip. So the next question is kind of a loaded question because people ask how to get rid of bubbles and also what do you use to get rid of bubbles. So me personally, I use a heat gun from Harbor Freight. Shout out to Harbor Freight. That's also where I get my gloves from. Um, yeah, in case just as far as PPE, I buy the big 100 box of nitro gloves from Harbor Freight. Um, they're probably hard to find right now again because the time's run, but in a typical standard year, month, time, you can get these for like $5.99 a box, $7.99 a box. Great deal, much cheaper than a Dollar Tree. But yeah, I also use a heat gun from Harbor Freight and I think it's like $15. I think it's a good investment. Um, because I don't, my, my heat gun is like jacked up. Like I didn't got 
plastic from um, plastic bags on it. Like if you see my alcohol ink uh, video, like the plastic was melting onto my heat gun. It has epoxy all over it. And so you can use a, a hair blow dryer, but invest the $15 in the heat gun because it's something you want to keep separate from the things you use on yourself personally. Again, my opinion, you can take it or leave it. And also the heat gun gets much hotter, so it's much quicker to, to get those bubbles. Because the thing about heat and epoxy is the more you put heat on epoxy, it's going to heat up and it's going to get runny. And it's going to burn. Epoxy will burn. And you don't want that. You just want to be able to heat it up enough to bring those bubbles to the surface. And the heat gun lets you kind of just zap it and do it very quickly. So my recommendation is to invest in the heat gun. Um, people also can ask, can you use like the embossing thing? And that also gets pretty hot. Um, so that'll work too. But just try to stay away from the blow dryer if you can. But if you're just getting starting out and you're just trying to like get a feel for it and you don't know if you want to make that investment yet, try it with the blow dryer. But when you get the heat gun, you will see the difference. And honestly, before I even got a heat gun, I didn't even use a blow dryer or anything. I just would sand um, afterwards, and we'll get to sanding in a minute, um, and just let it be. And so I didn't even worry about using a heat gun. And so in my initial video, I don't think it was very clear as to how long I let it dry. And so I feel like there are recommendations. It says demold time 24 to 48 hours. So based on that recommendation so kind of how epoxy works is that that's your demold time is really like your cure time time till it's fully safe to use and that's between 24 and 48 hours and so but your epoxy you'll notice after about six to eight hours it's not moving it's not going anywhere it may slowly be moving you might can't see it that's why you just keep it spinning but I let mine spin on my spinner for 12 hours and then I take it off and I set it to the side for the additional 12 hours. I've never tried to epoxy in less than 24 hours because again, per the recommendation, you wanna wait at least 24 hours for that cure to fully set in. I don't know what can happen if you don't wait, but I'm sure it may be a disaster in your future. So you can take them chances if you want, but 24 hours is not that long to wait. So 12 hours on the spinner, 12 hours drying, and then you can do your next layer. I know people have also had issues with stickiness. Stickiness is directly related to incorrect mix ratio. So the epoxy that I use is one to one ratio by volume, not by weight, by volume. You can do by weight if you're doing very small amounts, but when you get over those very small amounts, you're starting to get into density and viscosity differences. And so therefore you don't want to take a chance and your measurements being off. But if you, if it's sticky after, honestly, if it's sticky after more than 12 hours, after 12 hours, you should be able to handle it no problem. Just letting you know. If after those 12 hours, if it is sticky, you have a mix, you have a mix ratio issue. You like even if you're off by five mils, that can cause stickiness and cause it not to cure properly. So if that happens to you, sand off all the sticky layer. Now, if you keep sanding and it's sticky forever, you might as well get out an X-Acto knife and just cut into it because <laughs> fact of the matter is, if it's not cured correctly, you'll you should be able to like kind of you might take you a little bit. But you can cut into it with an exacto knife, slice it, and kind of just peel it off. And so if you do encounter that, sand it off. And then if you can't sand it, get an exacto knife out and just start over. Those are kind of like your two options if you have sticky issues. All right, so the next thing is sanding. Y'all be coming at my throat about sanding. And so that's my fault. In my last video, I said that between layers, I wet sand. Not long after that video, I stopped wet sanding. I had an experience where I was in the sink. I had, I had the cup in the sink, water running, and I was wet sanding, and all the epoxy just started to fall off. What happened was that the epoxy wasn't fully covering all the areas, like all the glitter on the cup, and so it was penetrating underneath that epoxy and penetrating against underneath that glitter and it all just started to fall off to the point where I literally could just peel it off and just take a paper towel and just wipe it off. That's why I no longer wet sand. So I had a life experience and I had to learn my lesson to not wet sand. Again, some people still wet sand, but personally you get the same, if not better effects from dry sanding. So I dry sand with, so I dry sand with this is just some, um, and it's like almost in the state of Texas, I just noticed. 
Some 220 grit fine finishes sanding paper. You can pick this up at Lowe's as well. Um, and also a sanding block, which I'm not sure where it is right now. It's probably in my craft cabinet. Um, and a sanding block. And so pretty much what I do is after the 24 hours, wait the full 24 hours, after it has dried and cured, just lightly abrade the surface uh, of your cup, getting out any kind of humps, lumps, and bumps. And I do the I do do the whole cup. I'll do a light layer over the whole cup. And you may be worried, you're like, oh, this is scratching up my cup, like really bad, like I'm worried. But what's gonna happen is you're gonna take the epoxy, and it's gonna fill in all those scratches and and bumps and all that, and it's gonna make it smooth and shiny. So don't worry about that. What you do need to worry about is sanding in the glitter. That's some place you never want to be. For example, I have a blue glitter, which is this glitter right here. That this has a silver. Oh, I'm getting glitter on myself. I'm on the vacuum, can't fix. And so this blue glitter has a silver base. And so if I sand too much into the epoxy, and this is the the what my cup is glittered with, it's gonna start just gonna start to look silver. That is when you should stop sanding. So don't if you're if you're sanding and all you're doing is just scuffing and scratching the epoxy, that's fine. When you're sanding your glitter and your glitter starts to look a different color, you're going too far. And again, that's another one of those cases where if I was wet sanding, it may have easily ruined my cup. Because if I had water running on my cup and it got underneath, because that's where they, that just tells me, no, that that's a, a spot where the epoxy is thin. And so if it gets underneath that epoxy, it has the ability to just ruin your cup, make your cup never set and cure. So just remember that when you're sanding. So definitely dry sand. And then again, if you guys really want a sanding video, I will make one for you. So thumbs up this video and leave a comment if you want to see me do a whole video on sanding. If it's something you're not comfortable with or something you just want to see me demonstrate, just leave me a comment and I will throw together a video and show you guys how to sand. So the last question I'm going to address is other materials you can use. And so people are under the impression, I don't know really why, um, that metal is the only material you can epoxy and that is so false if you look on my channel i have done epoxy on ceramic plastic metal nothing nothing is off limits people are for some epoxy does heat up it heats up on its own without a heat gun without a blow dryer and so the good thing about this epoxy and i cannot speak for other epoxy but for this epoxy i know that you can use it on dollar tree plastic Dollar Tree ceramic. I use it on an eight cent tile from Home Depot. And so it will not melt plastic. It will it will not damage plastic or anything like that to the point where you have to be worried about it. You definitely can use, honestly, I haven't found a material that I haven't been able to use this on. Even on the box, we're using it on wood. So they're, you know, silicone. I've used it in silicone molds. So this epoxy works in pretty much every application I can think of. And I always recommend when you are getting started in the epoxy game, go to the Dollar Tree. They have tumblers and cups. Practice on those because the epoxy is already expensive enough. What you don't want to do is practice on a $9 or $10 mug and your cure is messed up and it doesn't set or you don't like it, or the, you, don't, did, you didn't do a good job glittering, or it's still lumpy and bumpy, and you're not comfortable with sanding yet, go buy, go buy some Dollar Tree cups and practice on those cups and get comfortable. Just do like one or two, you know, maybe three if you need a little extra help. You know, we all been there, it's okay. Um, and just practice, practice on those, and so you're not wasting your money. Because again, you're already on use the epoxy, but Practice on more affordable materials before you go and buy more expensive materials, especially if you like want to make yourself a Yeti. Uh, you might want to practice first. Um, so that's all I got you guys. I'm glad you guys finally got to see me. Um, if you, I have other YouTube, a couple other YouTube channels where I actually do show my face. Um, and so I will link those below. It's like beauty and food. <laughs> so if you're into beauty and or food, I will link my other channels below. I hope this video was helpful. I hope it was useful. If I didn't cover anything, 
in the video. If I'm not feeling lazy, I will leave timestamps to each question in case you ever need to come back to it. Um, but if I didn't answer your question, leave it below and I will try to get to it. You guys, sometimes you flood me with questions or I'm just busy. Even though we're in a pandemic, I'm still working 10 hour days from home. Thank goodness. I'm um, very blessed in that, in that regard um, to be employed and be able to be safe at home. But um, yeah, leave the comments and questions below and I will get back to you. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and you can also follow me on Instagram at Period6Designs. And I will see you guys in the next one.